Hi, I'm Miss Morgan. Hi, I'm Miss Campbell. And we're going to be talking about John Milton and Paradise Lost, which is an up upcoming unit in world literature. Um, Miss Morgan, did you know that John Milton wasn't just a poet, that he was also a wanted man? A wanted man. That makes it more interesting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be um, reading about John Milton's poetry um, called Paradise Lost, the, the epic poem he wrote. But let's recently I read a little bit about John Milton and I found out that he was a wanted man in fact and he was a, he was a wanted man because in the 1600s in England there were two parties not really two parties but there was a parliamentarian group which would be much like in the United States our Congress Congress exactly okay. and then there was also a monarchy and um, there was a king King Charles the first who was ruling at that time and these two groups were um, competing with each other for power in England at that time. So like a civil war? Pretty much, a revolution almost. And um, the parliamentarians were very unhappy with um, King Charles and they wanted more power and John Milton himself sided with the parliamentarians. And he happened to write a pamphlet that where he actually stated that if the king were not supportive of the people and, and what was happening in the Parliament, that they should actually have the right to behead the king. Well, that sounds really cheery. <laughs> as it turned out, Charles I didn't do such a great job as king, and he was beheaded in 1649. Wow. And so there was no king till 1660, and the new ways of Parliament weren't going so well dream wasn't exactly coming out the way they wanted it to, and so they called Charles I's exiled son, Charles II, back to England to take over the monarchy again. And they made Charles II king, right? That's correct. And so when you hear that phrase, restoration, that's what it means, that the monarchy was restored. Right. First time I really understood it. <laughs> that, as you might expect, Charles II wasn't too happy about what had happened to his father, and he rounded up the people that he was able to find who were responsible for beheading his father, and he for his father's death, and he executed many of them. And fortunately, Milton wasn't directly involved in that beheading, but he was still a wanted man, and he did spend some time behind bars. Um, he was eventually pardoned with the help of his friends. Well. <clears throat> So, uh, I think by that time Milton was actually blind, and his whole dream of a new government in England was gone also. So he was in a perfect position to write an epic poem like Paradise Lost. Wait a minute, he was blind? He was blind. And he was in the perfect position to write? Well, yes, because he had lost his paradise. His paradise was to have a more equal government rather than being ruled by one person, a monarchy. And so who better than he, who have gone through this revolution, uh, than John Milton? Uh, you'll notice in the story that, uh, as the story begins, Satan is in revolution against God. And some people think that Satan sort of is symbolic of John Milton. Sure, they both were rebelling, right? right. Against that power, right. that powerful character. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you want to be careful when you read that and, and not assume that uh, Milton equals Satan. That would be not a good thing. Right. Um, but it sure stirs your interest, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> the, um, you know, Milton didn't just write Paradise Lost just because he was really upset and angry and and um, that he felt he lost his own paradise, but, but he did. I mean, those things did happen. But he actually had been planning the poem Paradise Lost for some time. He saw him, uh, 